An expert committee set up by the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board has recommended a rescue culture. The panel has suggested a voluntary out-of-court mediation process that can run parallel to the insolvency process. Now, the committee has also recommended that voluntary mediation under IBC be introduced in a phased manner. Sapna is standing by with the details. Sapna, you know, we have, of course, seen a significant backlog when it comes to IBC-related matters. What is the purpose? What is the rationale behind this mediation? And what are the next steps? Well, absolutely, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, that's precisely the reason why this expert panel, which took uh, close to you know uh, one odd year to uh, come down to its recommendations, uh, that's why they're suggesting out of court settlements, or in other words, you may call voluntary mediation. And in fact, this panel was headed by the former law secretary, Mr. T. R. Vishwanathan, and of course, other members of the IBBI, which is a regulator for the IBC. And having said that, uh, you know, a lot of emphasis has been laid on this particular recommendation that uh, increasingly. Uh, the government, along with other stakeholders, should try and adopt uh, a voluntary mediation framework, which is what, is, what has been suggested in this 80-odd page report. Uh, uh, you know, th that's one significant uh, takeaway. And uh, let's just talk about some numbers also. So, for instance, the report does mention that as of March 2023, 67% uh, of the corporate insolvency resolution processes which are underway, 67% of them in terms of uh, arriving at a resolution, approval for resolution, it has taken over 670 days. Now, the statutory time limit earlier was 270 days. It was extended by some more days. 330 is the maximum limit. And the Supreme Court has already said this 330-day limit also is more directory in nature rather than a statutory time limit. And here we are talking about over 650 days, 670 three days to be precise. Now, look at the complex cases. The report says that in terms of the complex cases, the, uh, you know, the resolutions have taken over 1,000 days. So what happens in the meanwhile is the asset value just gets completely eroded, uh, completely depreciated, and, uh, you know, even, even the committee of creditors and other stakeholders, operational creditors, we are not even talking about them. Even the financial creditors, they end up with kind of peanuts in comparison to the, uh, you know, to the value that was there on the table when the case entered into NCLT. That's one. Second, uh, you know, the report says very clearly that uh, given the backlog at NCLT and, and LAT uh, and NCLAT, I mean, they also handle cases under the Competition Law as well as the Companies Act. And then on top of that, you have the IBC pendency coming up. So, uh, you know, this is a great uh, report, to uh, so to speak. Uh, it's made a very clear direction in terms of full framework, in terms of uh, voluntary mediation to be done in phases, to be looked at, uh, you know, smaller cases can be looked at first, which have a quick quicker turnaround time, the bigger cases can be incorporated, incorporated slowly. However, the point also remains here that this will need a lot of amendments in the IBC law. Uh, previously, also, more than a year back, a lot of recommendations had been doing the rounds. There was a lot of stakeholder consultation. Yeah. Those recommendations went to MCA, and we have not seen the light of the day yet. So okay. let's hope and pray that probably over the next three to four odd months, post-elections, you can see some action on IBC. Well, it's been long in the making, as Satna was pointing out, but this is a significant development as far as the insolvency process is concerned, as and when it does go through. Satna, many thanks for joining us. We will head into a break, but up next, Old Class